Yo, Elliot, I just wanted to say that you are doing what you're meant to be doing here on earth. God had a plan for you and you navigated in such a way that has made you more than prosperous. Thank you for your hard work. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now on to his question. He says, however, my question relates to marriage. I'm 24. My girlfriend is 33. I plan on proposing next year. What do you think are some of the most important factors on being in a long-term relationship like marriage? I know what I want out of life, and for the most part, I stay attentive and on my purpose, but there's still a little blip in the system that breeds doubt and unsureness, especially when it comes to our age differences. How can I prevent this from happening, or can I only to a certain degree? So you ask me, you ask me, what are some important factors on being in a long-term relationship like marriage? And it is critical, in my opinion and in my experience, that there are clearly defined gender roles. I don't even like that word gender. I got to stop using it. Clearly defined roles for the husband and for the wife. Clearly defined paradigms from which each plays their role. The, as I've been unveiling some of the Marxist indoctrination that has subverted our culture with its intention of destroying the family, one of the things that we've seen is this depolarization of male and female. And they started it with bringing boys and girls together in school in the 1940s, 1950s. Prior to that, boys and girls were treated different because we're different. And what does that do when, when boys and girls are separated? There's more polarity. And what happens when there's more polarity? There's more attraction, right? And so what the Marxists have essentially done was to depolarize the, the sexes by teaching women that their role is not good enough and that men, we feel that we've been somehow oppressive, toxic, and wrong, right? So you, you completely brainwash the two into not recognizing, not living, not respecting, not loving our roles as men and women. They've blurred the line. Egalitarianism, feminism, it is a plague upon the marriage, upon the family. It's destroying us. And you're not going to hear what I'm going to say very many places. And a lot of people aren't going to like what I have to say. But the bottom line is that marriages work and they've always worked when there is hierarchy. That means, in, as it relates to your wife, that she is to submit to your lead. There has to be a leader in every organization. There has to be a top guy, a CEO, the person that's the president because a buck stops there. The person that takes all of the responsibility should receive all of the authority or to the degree that you take responsibility is to the degree that you have authority. And the non-authority is to follow the lead and submit to the lead of that benevolent leader. We've come to this point so much so that we can't even fathom that there's a benevolent leader, that someone who is an authority over us could actually have our best interest in mind. And that's the man's role. The man's role is to have his wife's and his family's best interest in mind and to make every decision for them from that perspective. That's called taking responsibility and being the authority. Your girlfriend is 10 years older than you. One of the litmus tests that I would produce in this situation, but in every situation, particularly because she's older than you, is what, do, ask her this, what do you think about a woman's role as the helpmate to her husband? What do you think about, better yet, what do you think about a wife's submission to her husband's authority? If that is an issue, then polarity is dead. That has to be spoken about and it has to be dealt with. Otherwise, it's going to show up guaranteed. Guaranteed, you're at some point, maybe when you're 33 and she's 43, are going to realize, oh shit, 
What did I get myself into? This woman doesn't respect me. She doesn't take my advice. She doesn't follow through with the things that I ask her to do. She doesn't value my opinion. She thinks she's my mommy. She thinks that she rules over me. And it's not designed that way, not biologically, not biblically. We are designed as men and women to relate to each other in this hierarchy. Now, for a man, number one, to take that role, you have to have her best interest 100% in mind all the time, above and beyond even your own. That's key. That's how you become a husband. That's how you become a father. You take responsibility. Number two, you have to have a good track record of doing the right thing at the right time and her submitting and giving you, you know, I hate to use this phrase, but giving you the space to make those decisions and then trusting you along that route. What else? Having the best interest, having a good track record, right? There are certain logistics that work better when they're in place. Like, for example, being older than her helps, but that's not your situation. But if she makes more money than you, polarities flip-flopped. What ends up happening to men who get into these depolarized relationships is that they wake up one day and they realize, like I said, that all that there is no polarity. She doesn't even want to have sex with me. This is one of the issues that comes up in situations like this in the men that I deal with here. Why doesn't my wife not, why does she not want to have sex with me? Before we got married, we had sex. Then we got married, started having children, and she pulled out all her sex. There's no more sex because there's no polarity. She doesn't respect you. She doesn't look up to you. She doesn't want to please you. You want a woman that wants to please you. My wife gets pleasure out of pleasing me. There's no competition between my wife and I. You know why my wife wants to please me? Because I give her everything. I am her provider. And she respects that. She doesn't take it for granted. She doesn't think, oh, you know, I can get any man to give me whatever I want because I got this promiscuous pussy that I throw around my entire teenage years. And I was getting all kinds of attention. I still got it. I can go do it. That kind of attitude is toxic femininity, which is a plague upon this planet more so than masculine. Um, anyway, I'm starting to fade here on, on, uh, in my thoughts. You asked me what are factors that are important for long-term relationship, and I think the main thing I want to hammer home to you and to everyone listening to this is that you have to establish yourself as the leader in the relationship. You have to establish yourself as the head of your family. She has to, with great pleasure, yield and submit to your authority. I was thinking about this the other day because Colleen and I talk about stuff like this, right? Because, you know, people might think like either my wife is oppressed or she doesn't hear what I'm saying. Like, Elliot, do your wife hear this stuff? And so me and my wife were talking about the importance of polarity um, and submission. And so, you know, I was, she was giving her opinion, I was giving my opinion. And then uh, I, I couldn't help but to bring up what happens when we're in bed together, right? I'm not going to paint the picture for you, me and my wife in bed. But the act of sex is an act of submission by a woman. Just, just by mere virtue of laying back and spreading her legs, she's got a gash in her body, an opening in her body. That's a vulnerability. For a woman to maintain, for, for there to be polarity in that relationship, she must want to expose herself, her vulnerability, give up control. Right. That's basically what happens when a woman has sex with you. She gives up control. She yields to your authority. And then you're the performer. Right. The man is the burden of performance is always on the man. But think about it in terms of sex. If she can't trust you in life, she ain't going to trust you in bed. If she can't yield to you through sex, she can't yield to you in life. And I, I hate to put it this way because it's not entirely true, but there's an element of truth to it that what happens in the bedroom is what's happening outside the bedroom. Do, are you dominating? Are you domineering? I don't, not in a negative way, but are you dominant with your woman sexually? 
can you just grab her and pull her and hug her and do what you want with her sexually? And she will not just yield because you're stronger and, and you're a toxic racist, what do they call it, rapist, whatever, right? No, when polarity is there and love is there and respect is there, she wants you to take her. She wants you to be a little rough with her. Maybe not too much. Now I'm, I'm not talking about, what is it, BDSM or whatever these people like, they tie each other up and beat each other and they end up with bruises and shit. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about just being the assertive authority in the situation. Every situation should be colored to some extent with that. Not every single situation, right? You know, there are things that my wife are better than me at that I'm like, hey, baby, you handle that. And same thing, vice versa. But generally, the, 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 the overarching theme of the relationship, it has to be there. And I think the reason why I, I, I hammer this point home so much in this particular conversation is because she's got 10 years on you. If you, at any point, ever sense that she looks down on you, is lost, bro. I don't know if it's possible. Just, I don't know. I don't know if it's possible for an older woman to look up to a younger man. Especially that spread. I don't, I don't know if it's possible she could look up to you. Your wife should look up to you. I know this doesn't vibe with the narrative of our day. But I'm telling you what works and what tradition has, has always been. The woman looks up to and respects the man. You know how in the world they say respect women, right? That's like a meme, respect women. The reason why it's a meme is because it's wrong. You don't respect women. I'm not saying be disrespectful to women, but you love women. You love her. She, on the other hand, respect. That's how it goes. That's how it goes. Love trickles down, respect moves up. You shower her with love and she respects you as a result. I'm not sure that that hierarchy, and I know everybody hates that word, but I don't know if it can. I don't know if that can work that way. If she's older than you, I don't know if it could work that way. If she makes more money than you, I don't know if it could work that way. If she's been riding the cock carousel and more sexually advanced than you, I don't even know if that's possible. If she's taller than you. <laughs> Right. I know I'm being facetious, a little crazy right now, but if every time I'm around my woman, I got to look up, the dynamic is going to be a little off. As as much as a woman doesn't want to. This is why. Check it out. Check it out. Check this out. This is how you know I'm right. Women prefer a man that's taller. At least taller than her. Right. This is what, you know, I watch some of these YouTubers, you know, where they talk about, they talk to the girls, right? They try to they figure out girls, they have conversation with the girls. One of the things that comes up is like short men. And time and time again, whether they say it or not, women opt for a man that's taller, at least same height, but taller. Is that, now, is that wrong? Do we have to fight against that? Do we have to pout? No. It's just reality, and we deal with it as it comes. Just like with the age, just like with the money, and just like with the sex. It's just that when it comes to height, it, it be, it's almost comical because it's so damn true. You want a wife that you can love on, love down on, and a woman wants a man she can respect up to. That's sexual polarity. That's sexual polarity. That's how it works. It's not flat. It's linear. It works this way. Order. There's an order. And so you ask me what is what are the most important factors for long-term relationship like marriage? There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. But sexual polarity, polarity, polarity is the foundation. Hope that helps, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram 
and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.